just as an overview for this automotive example this is a part that's in the range of uh two feet two feet to three feet overall um so again this overlaps with same same actually uh devices pretty much except for swapping out you know more arms in this range i've seen in this type of application i've seen a lot of arms work uh and handhelds because it's more of an object scan um, and in this case you see here that we have this and this should look familiar because this is the this is the um the example all the way at the top right here this is the actual uh it's the same exact one there um exhaust manifold so i have the exhaust manifold we scanned and reverse engineered it let's toggle over to the design x file and we'll roll through that and take a look so the last one was a a surface trim tutorial really right it's like here's how i extract tons of free flowing lofted surface and how do i trim them all together to create that shape and make a model right that was a really cool application this one is uh really cool because it shows the the sweeps or um yeah sweeps of these here and we can talk about how that was done so we can just roll back so you can see here they 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 started down here modeling the the flange on the back end of the exhaust manifold and they went ahead and extruded it and created that flange in place and they went ahead and spent a lot of time on this bracket here, which is really cute, cool. They used surfaces to model this bracket, which I thought this was interesting. I really liked the way they did it. As they went ahead and fit the bottom and the sides, and then you see here that they trimmed them together, then filleted them. So you see that? So they were able to make that bracket. If I just turn off the mesh real quick, now they come back with some trims on the sides. So trim this guy. There. And then the trick here, when you got sheet metal, is model that exterior as a surface, then thicken it. So you see here now we've created this thickened piece. I really thought that was a a really cool way of going about creating that shape again there's different ways that you can do it um but i just like the way that whole surface method and then thicken you'll see is used actually a couple times on this model um so here they went ahead and created this piece where the manifold mounts to the engine and actually they took a similar because this manifold is another sheet metal plate like a lot of manifolds are not made with sheet metal um, that I see, but in this one, it's a sheet metal piece. So they modeled it as a surface. Actually, let me just show that real quick. And then thickened it into a solid there. <laughs> And then add your fillets and trims to cut some different areas away. Now let's see what's next. I don't remember here the next section was. Oh, the some of the the tabs, the brackets that mount other things as well. See so here that this was a very similar approach to the last one, where they they did it as a sheet metal. If it is a sheet metal piece that's welded on like it is here, you're modeling it in a similar way that it's that it's manufactured, right? So the closer you model it to the way it's manufactured, a lot of times, um, the better. So you see, we will step forward there.
and oh so it switched over so they left it i think they're gonna they they left that one and are coming over here and they're doing a, a similar thing here where we're going to trim these together and they used uh fillets there to create that and then they just did both thickens right after each other so they thicken this one and thicken that one all at once uh, well right near each other sometimes you might organize your tree in a certain way so if you want to go back and adjust those you know where they were so this is uh, a, a a cool section checking um okay there they added the bolts cool awesome so this is the section that i was about to say is we can extract a center polyline from from these sweeps or lofts believe it or not too so you see let me just scroll down and come over to the reference polyline and turn it on and turn off the mesh so that polyline we can extract that from the mesh with this tool up here polyline and if i come in i just want to show you you can extract that that's what they did here and they said i want to extract it from an extrusion profile uh, a sweep or a pipe and when you do that what that does is it gives me that to where i can draw i can sketch directly over top of it and this is this is how we're different from i don't think anyone else in the market actually designs these the proper way from scan data anyway. So because we have that ability to extract that center line and then sketch it. So we just go into 3D sketch and draw the sketch of the center line of that sweep directly over it. So that way, when I create my sweep, it's a center line sweep not a surface sweep where they draw the guide curves along the surface i've seen other softwares that do reverse engineering out there there's a distinction here are you extracting it from the center line because that's the way it was designed right and then this actually makes it so it's easier to edit later on if you need to make changes to make modifications depending on the engine that's there that you're creating this so you now you see here we're going to do the same thing. It's rinse and repeat where I will extract all four of these. To create my bundle there. And then this is really neat as well. So here I'll just scroll down and turn the sketches on not those sketches these guys here so for this part it chose to do it this way now again there's a whole host of ways you can go about doing this um so they this is a stamped out sheet metal part that this part is welded together and depending on your company if you are the manufacturer of this you will know the manufacturing methods that you're going to use to create it so that also drives how you might model it so we're going in in this instance we're going to go ahead and create surface offset it to the inside trim the top and bottom so in this instance they created that shape as a surface and now they're trimming the top and the bottom of it together and and bounding it to make it a solid so if i hide the surfaces hide the mesh now you hear that see we created a solid of that piece and then now it's focused on unifying these now there's lots of decisions if you depending on if you're modeling this for somebody else or if you're the manufacturer that's making these there's lots of decisions to be made 
about how you want to collect these and how you override the error that might be in the scan or in the manufactured part, right? So in this instance, they're doing it a little more uh, as built. So you can see here, it's like all four of those bumps around the outside are not completely aligned with these center lines. And it all depends on what your intention for modeling this is. If you really need to just make another one or if you're trying to make a perfect, perfect model to then go make like upgraded, very expensive headers, you know, that are going to replace these. So it just depends on what you're doing if you want to make decisions there. So the rest of this is, you know, just modeling the rest of the brackets and going through and finishing all the details. And the final thing I wanted to show here is yeah in the heat shields we'll just go to the end so there's the heat shield and the different mounts and the pickups the different locations is the final thing is being able to do a deviation from the original scan and check how you modeled it and the error and the detail, right? So people, you may know that with exhaust, the important thing is, are the connections and the mounts. Um, in between, you're trying to stay within a certain envelope so the clearances are all the same. But with these pipes, they're bent. And sometimes they're not like mandrel bent and all these different types of methods. So you're gonna see deviation on these because uh, of the way that some of these lower end exhaust manifolds are modified. It's not important to have high detail in this area. So we're modeling it perfect. So there's gonna be a little more error that shows on the color plot. But the point of this is that you get feedback, you reverse engineered it, you get a chance here. And this can happen throughout the whole process of reverse engineering where you check the accuracy and you can roll the mouse over the surface and understand how it deviates. That way you can catch any mistakes that you might be making before you jump over to start manufacturing, right? And the color plot has saved so, so, so many people before they go to start manufacturing. Say, wait a minute, this has a lot of air. What is going on there? Do I need to change it or is it just fine? But at least you can make the decision and you are aware of it. Um, so. This is my exhaust manifold application that I wanted to show. It's really cool to see how you can model these uh, crazy swept uh, pieces to remanufacture. And the automotive aftermarket is huge. Like, so I just chose in this example, one of an exhaust manifold, but the entire exhaust run you can do as well, which maybe we'll select one of those for a later one in the webinar series.